also. I'm an animal whisperer and Matei medicine woman originally from Montana. I've been whispering with animals since I was a baby. Growing up in wild places in Montana, I was usually on someone's back as they tracked and trapped. Animals were my first family. I understand their languages as well as I do English or Spanish or sign language. Over the last six years, I have been getting pertinent messages from animals all over the planet. Birds, whales, dolphins, coyotes, zebras, mountain lions, elk, dogs, cats, horses, and more have pointedly said many similar things. They have asked me as translators to relay these specific to other humans. They immediately express gratitude for their lives and for the humans who care for them. They are deeply concerned about the casual attitude of developers coming into areas without any concern for the disruption of the wild animals' lives, destruction of their homes and life support systems, their habitats. They are deeply concerned about the pollution of the air, water, and earth with pesticides and copious toxins humankind has produced. They speak of genetic malformations such as missing limbs, eyes, and misplaced genitalia. Another concern is the increase of autoimmune disorders, including cancer among animals and humans alike, caused by carcinogens in the environment and those in our food. It's difficult for them to understand why and how we humans, as an intelligent race, are consenting and contributing to this environmental and personal damage. They call to us to wake up and walk in reality, not denial. They are particularly concerned about the children and LGB among us and among themselves. The children and the LGB are the most vulnerable to the deadly poisons we have manufactured and laced our planet with. As some humans before them, such as Rachel Carson and John Muir, they call for a halt to this activity before it is too late. There are safe, effective alternatives to all pesticides, along with green ways to clean up these toxins. Russia and Japan have already successfully employed many of these methods which are readily available. Animals are very concerned about the separation and division caused by hatred and anger among us. Plus, the negative effects echoed into the brutal treatment of animals. The time for us to act is now. The only thing that matters is the love between each other. It surpasses every bond, even death. Love is eternal. It often isn't easy to learn these lessons, but we must treasure each other truly now. All we really have is right now, this fleeting moment. It comes in on the winds of change. We take so much for granted. So when you look into the eyes of all these animals as I have and feel their heart beating um, with your own as I've been doing, uh, it's just it's an irrevocable change. And as I said, I'm fortunate because I have always heard their languages. I've always heard them. Uh, many of us have the ability to listen and wake up without hearing directly what's, um, what they're saying. It's about um, coming more into contact with the earth. When we were a society of hunters and gatherers and before the world wars, um, most of our society and uh, we, were just, we were just more um, earth-based. Many of us farmed or came from farming communities. So many people now are in large cities, and they, um, their closest contact with the earth might be a, a plant in their apartment or their dog who waits for them at night or the cat that's curled up on the back of their couch. So um, there's a lot of wisdom and there's a lot of love to be shared and known by animals. Um, and I wanted to impart these things today. I'm really thankful for all the animals I work with every day. Um, my personal animal friend, Koba, and all the human beings who love and care for animals already on the planet, and um, also for the people that are just waking up to that being import an important part of their own life and their own um, healing and their own uh, 